All right, folks, welcome. I'm going to uh, share this out and we'll be right back. Okay, I went back. All right. So, this, uh, th what I hope to do today is, or tonight, is give us a feel for the, the setup for Tactical Surprise. Uh, we're having a look at Next War Poland as the title of the video suggests. It's a GMT title, recently released. Mitch Land is the designer. It's a, re a reboot of the Next War Korea system, and uh, I played a fair bit of the of that module and the India-Pakistan module. This is the first time I've had an experience with a operational map and a strategic map. And the transition between the two, moving between the two is uh, fairly interesting. So where what I hope to do tonight is just kind of have a look at the setup, talk about what the potential entry points are, how we might handle the invasion as the Russian forces lunging into Poland uh, for, for the quick win, as the case may be. Uh, we might get into the victory conditions. I think I've forgotten them already. I've had this set up for about uh, two weeks, actually. And I did do some of the very first roles that need to be done. <clears throat> uh, I did not do the uh, cruise missile launches or anything like that, but I did the, some of the submarine stuff that need to happen and basically been mulling about quite a bit. So you guys here are my catalyst for actually getting this started uh, so that I'll actually get over the hump and, and kind of come up with some sort of half-assed plan and then see if it'll work. So let's see how we go. Uh, let me just see who's joined. I see we've got seven or eight guys joining in. Hey, Kevin and John's here and Michael Paul, good to see you. I think Devin's gonna join us as well. Uh, he's off watching, um, if you're not interested in this and you like lock and load, Itinerant Hobbyist is running a live session right now. That's why I'm a few minutes late. Uh, I said I'd be on at uh, 9.30 and it's 9.45 right now. But I was uh, avidly watching him uh, play through some lock and load World War II stuff. Anyway, so here's the situation. Uh, if we can... Uh, we we'll cast our minds to recent news. We know that there's a little bit of tension in uh, Middle and Eastern Europe. And in particular, uh, we've seen some heavy activity down the Ukraine. Now, uh, attention, as far as this game is concerned, is kind of migrated up to, towards the, the Polish front, right? So <clears throat> I've still got a little bit of a cough here and a <clears throat> lurgy, so you'll have to deal with, uh, deal with that. Uh, but basically, it's uh, Russians and the Belarus forces are going to uh, try and take on Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, NATO, and Poland, and we want to uh, we want to try and get a feel for, for what we can do, what we can't do, and if you've read any articles or strategy papers or stuff uh, about Poland, it pretty open, relatively flat terrain, and there's an area called the Sawalki Gap, which is this rough terrain here, and this rough terrain here, and this area here, basically is the, the clean shot as far as um, the strategists go as uh, for, for rolling into uh, Poland and knocking, knocking things out. This is uh, Warsaw down here. You've got Kaliningrad up here, which is Russian territory. Um, Gdansk is up here. What do we got here? What is this town? And I'm not 100. Yeah, Gdansk is here actually. I'm not 100 percent familiar with all the names on the map yet. I, I've spent a little bit of time looking at it, but that's why we're here tonight. And uh, so there's that, right? So as you can see, uh, open terrain, rough terrain, uh, forest stuff, urban areas, cities. Uh, actually, uh, major cities. Uh, if we can, I guess, got to stretch. I've got my phone attached to the power cable because it's a little low. Uh, major ur cities and urban areas, and these are these are urban areas. I think I'll have to check the tech. I probably should know that, shouldn't I? All right. Um, if you're just joining, pop in and say hi. Uh, it's always nice to announce yourself so we know who's here. And nothing, you know, none of that will be seen online. It, uh, none of the comments are, are recorded. So uh, just uh, just my uh, 
my voice. That's it. All right. So there's that. So this is the kind of the, this open area, which is where I think we're supposed to come in. But we also have this corner of the whoa, nearly knocked the map of the phone over. Got this corner here and this section here that is part of Belarus, uh, which can also be used as an entry point. And frankly, you know, this th while this is heavy terrain here, you can set right up on the border. This looks like an attractive way to lunge into Poland and uh, and and avoid some of the sort of predisposed defensive lines that are uh, set up back from the Sawalki Gap, right? Uh, there are these honking big uh, S four hundred units, which uh, I'm not going to go into all of the different characteristics on the counters because if you if you don't own the game won't really mean anything to you. If you do own the game, then I'm wasting your time because you'll, you'll know it already. So uh, just suffice to say that that is a big ass uh, uh, anti-aircraft uh, piece of equipment that is gonna mess with uh, NATO forces because it has enormously good range. Right, and we'll talk, we're gonna get into a little bit of the, the game sequence and stuff like that. We'll, we'll talk about how, because that's important when we're actually planning out our game, our game play. So the, the so this area map or this strategy map, strategic map. Units in here, you can have as many units in this these areas as you wish, and in the setup, you have to have at least one, uh, for instance, one Lithuanian in every Lithuanian area, one Latvian in every area, uh, but you can have more than one once you've got at least one in every area. Uh, when you fight, you can only have six steps. So I could, best I could get here, for instance, is uh, these six steps and perhaps some artillery support if I had it, which I don't, but we can have this HQ supporting. Uh, so I could get a three to one going on there. Uh, that would be the best I can do. The, <coughs> the Russian forces must all either set up in Belarus, or Russia land areas, uh, so not on the operational map, which is interesting because that's going to drive the it's going to drive the gameplay a little bit, and we'll we'll see why in a second. I just realized <laughs> I just realized that I probably should have an extra you know instead of having a second Lithuanian here uh, here I should have it here. So I'm going to probably put this uh, slightly better. Uh, unit down here. I believe he can go there. We'll see. I'll, I'll check all this later when, when I actually get started. Uh, <clears throat> and so, so I, I can you can move one area a turn. So, for instance, if I if I put a lot of the Russian units in uh, Belarus, I can lunge. I can bring a whole bunch of guys here, do a couple of small attacks, then the, uh, and, and yeah, dislodge them or not, as the case may be. Uh, but then next, I can. Um, I just realized something. I was looking at the wrong, uh, wrong stacking, the wrong uh, numeral for the stacking points. I believe I just led you down the primrose path already, and we haven't even started the game. Where is my little set of rules? I'll just grab these guys. I'll just tell you one sec. I think the, the stacking number is the number on the left, not the right. The right is uh, something else. Let me try to dot recall. That's advanced series rules. I'll come back to it in a second. Let me see if I can find this right here real quickly. It's game specific rules. Oh, come on, man. There's a chart. You know what? One thing this game does have is a lot of charts. So let's just find the chart that has the little descriptor on it. And I bet you it's going to be not on any of these because I sorted them all. So bear with me here because I do want to you know, chat with you, share the right data. There was a chart that had all of the icons and what they meant. And yeah, the number on the left is the stacking value. So I had that wrong. And the other one is indeed the efficiency rating. Man, has it been a while? Okay, so let's go back to what we were talking about here. I said there was six versus four stacking points, but it's actually two versus a half here. Let's get in a little closer and I'll show you what I mean. 
I'm sure someone's probably commented on that and picked that up. So what I could have done in, with, in this instance is say brought five, brought f these four versus this one, and that makes a bit more sense because then I could get a six to one attack, which is a little more attractive. Uh, similarly, here I could bring uh, two, four, six factors, two, four, six factors, as the case may be. And we could uh, fight against six stacked factors here if I had them. I've got two and a half there uh, in this instance. So that, that makes a little bit more sense. So a little, little more uh, effective combat. All right. So where were we before I, I distracted myself with realizing I'd made a mistake? So I was thinking that this would be a neat way to come in, which would end up being, in essence, this... Uh, I'm going to just unplug would be this area here, Sudova. Is that how you pronounce that? Sudova, Sudova, maybe. Uh, which is this corner here on the map. There's a there's a corresponding line here that shows you where the, the, the strategic map and the operational map overlap a little bit, right? So, so we could lunge onto here and then when you move, make the transition from land area to here, cost you one movement point, you enter at the at the uh, hmm. Do you enter at the edge? I don't know. That's a question that we need to need to look up. But uh, anyway, I, I think we could probably start somewhere around here, and then the idea we could go this way, or we could go this way and join up with uh, the uh, Kaliningrad forces over there. All right, let me just uh, check in. Oh, thanks, thanks for the thumbs down. You know, I love dudes that join in and then leave and give thumbs down or give, uh, or join in and give a thumbs down and stay, dick. All right, so uh, let's see. Tony, what's up? Uh, yeah, Mitchell, land. Right, right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh man, now, see, now I'm under pressure. I've got the bro. <laughs> I've got the designer here. Uh... Oh, Kyle, I'm sorry for waking you up, man. Who else is here? Hey, Justin, how you doing? All right. Okay, so anyway, uh, now I don't know where I was at. So I'm going to have a drink. That maybe that'll help. Oh, that's smooth. Okay, so the 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 reason one of the reasons why I've had a little bit of a hard time getting started is there are a lot of choices that need to be made in the very opening gambits because you have this. Uh, let me find my sequence of play here. Now that I pulled all the rules out and messed up my stuff. One of the very first things we have to do is, uh, as the Russian player, is launch 10 cruise missile attacks. And what those cruise missile attacks are and what they do, uh, or what impact they have, uh, can be pretty significant. Uh, so we kind of get a, 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 10, a 10 spot advantage with no, uh, no rebuttal from, from NATO or the Poles. So what are, what are 10 cruise missile attacks going to do to you is the question that you probably want to ask yourself. And so let's pull the advanced tables out, have a look, <clears throat> and see what sort of things we could potentially do with 10 cruise missile attacks. So we're going to be doing advanced strikes, right? So we're going to be using this table. And see cruise missiles are over there on the right-hand side. You know, the most effective uh, long long-range weapon in the game pretty much and x's mean destroyed and twos mean two steps and one means one step pretty straightforward right and it really doesn't matter about terrain doesn't matter about where you are uh what's going on uh it they're they're gonna mess you up obviously rough and highlands and all that's where where they happen now i can hit i can hit uh the enemy's uh anti-aircraft tracks right over here, I can hit their uh, AA tracks. We can attempt to uh, attack their airfields and try and uh, inflict collateral damage on their airfields, which may take out some of the aircraft. Um, 
we can target uh, headquarters if we have um, detected them or spotted them. And uh, that might be advantageous as well. I think given the way the air forces are stacking up and that while the US forces are smaller, I think they've got a slight edge in quality. So it's probably gonna be either trying to take out the uh, NATO Air Force or really trying to degrade their anti-aircraft capability so that I, when I do uh, come in as the Soviet, uh, Soviet as the Russian uh, force, uh, Air Force attacking, I have much less, uh, <clears throat> much less, uh, uh, you know, air defense mechanism and mechanics to, to worry about. I don't have to, I'm not going to have to worry about being intercepted. I don't have to worry about uh, being detected and then have a missile shot at my backside. So what I, what I want to be able to do is own the air and then own the air, uh, the CAS uh, based part of the war uh, with impunity. I think that's where I want to be. Now, I may also want to try and take out uh, uh, sort of the, the strate- some of the strategic aspects in the game as well. So we might want to try and hit the uh, uh, ports or supply depots or uh, other bits and pieces. So we, you know, we've got to think about how we want to handle that. Uh, I'm leaning towards all in on uh, degrading the air force, but I'm open to ideas on that, and particularly if you've played it. And Mitch, I don't know what your playtesting uh, uh, looked at. One right advanced game. Tables, Mitch is saying there is a box which lists the targets, the weapon targets. Okay, Mitch, I'm looking now. Keep in mind there's a 15 or 20 second delay here. Um, is it a single chart or a, or a double? Oh, here we go, theater weapons. Cruise missiles. Yeah, see, I remember when I played the uh, first time I played the India Pakistan, which was the first time I played your system. Uh, I I destroyed a division. I thought that was really cool. Can't do that. Uh, so here's what we can target. Installations, airfields, beachheads, detected supply depots, Supreme HQs, or naval uh, unit. Ooh, naval units. Uh, air defense tracks, which is what we were talking about earlier on, and uh, missile point markers. So we can also try and degrade their cruise missile count that they have. Um, one of the other interesting aspects of this is, you know, of course, there's this naval component to this and uh, submarines and all that sort of fun stuff. And I have no idea how they're gonna impact the game. So I, I put these, uh, these sags here and to see, you know, just to see what would happen. Uh, we immediately got a point detect on this guy here in the, uh, the Bornholm uh, Basin. Uh, we managed to avoid detection here. Uh, so how, how the naval game impacts this is also something that I'm unclear about and we'll, uh, we'll have to kind of learn by playing uh, along with this uh, area map stuff as well. Yeah, uh, springtime, that's a really good... Um, yeah, shoot detected CV. Uh, I'm just looking at some of these... Uh, yeah, Kyle, it was probably Mitch that gave me the thumbs down. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all, unless, of course, uh, Dave turned up and gave me the thumbs down. Uh, just kidding. All right, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin, yeah, you know, there is that. There are some guys that, uh, that uh, just thumbs down all my shit that I do, but I don't give a fuck. I'm still here. I haven't gone away. It's been five years. Good luck getting rid of me. Um, yeah, so I think air, you're right, Mitch, about the the quality of the air-to-air combat units. Let's have a look at those because I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm just going to try and set that steadily there and move my chair. So the, uh, the, the cool thing is... While the MiG-31s have uh, the kind of extreme range or standoff uh, attack combat values, they're only a strength of three versus the US, uh, some of the US stuff is rated fours at their standoffs. And are there any fives here? I don't think we've got any fives that start on the map. We of course do have the big B-52s. Are they B-52s? Yes, they are. And uh, 
Then there's the B1 bombers. There's a lot of bombing capability, a lot of strike capability here. And then even the, uh, let's see, there's some five ready guys here. Uh, so that, while, while it's easy to say it's a larger air force and it's perhaps not as strong, there's a lot of those dudes. And I think it could be quite easily overwhelmed particularly if you're ganged up on two or three to one. There's not a lot of awesome stuff here. Uh, you've got some wild weasel guys, uh, some th there's some more three ready things. I feel like I'm kind of light on aircraft for this uh, scenario, but maybe, uh, hopefully I've got it set up correctly. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, we'll, we'll get into this. Uh, I love the air war. I love the full air war the way it is. I haven't uh, finished really you know, digging into the details on the supplement number one yet. I have had a look at it uh, where you're picking uh, kind of task groups to uh, um, build your, build out your, your strike packages. I, I kind of like doing it this way where I get to pick and choose a little bit more, uh, but we'll see. I do have some uh, NATO aircraft I have to go on that, uh, that pile over there, but they're, uh, they're sitting right. Yeah, for the moment, they're the ones that were drawn out. Okay. Uh, that's what we drew, Mitch, for the for the first um, for the first turn. So now you're making me nervous that I've missed something. Let me just see uh, here. Uh, maybe this is a good good that you're here or not as the case may be let's just see let me find my little there's a little chart yeah. here we go <clears throat> here's the here's the the setup chart oh you see him okay okay so you're you're either you're behind or I'm behind but uh all right, um, and I do have a cup full of airplanes, but I think I've pulled everything we need to play pull for the time being. No, I don't have them there yet because I was I just laid them out uh, as they were drawn. Okay, so we're literally just getting getting squared away to get going. Okay, so uh, it looks like Spring Times giving me some good advice here too. No U.S. and CVs. Right. Now, I also noticed that there was uh, some talk of, uh, I was reading online where some guy wanted to move all of his aircraft into Germany to start with. I guess trying to protect them from collateral damage or something like that. I'm not sure what that was about. Okay. I still feel like I'm undermanned here though, uh, Mitch. It's, it's going to be a very interesting um, uh, battle here. I'm, I'm taking, we'll see how robust or how resilient these Polish forces are. So, anyway, as we were, as I was trying to trying to chat here a little bit, uh, we've got this sequence of play that we that we go through, which uh, I think most of you who have played are very familiar with. This <coughs> um, there's this early ten cruise missile. Uh, sort of preemptive strike that goes down, which more than likely I think we'll put against the air, and then we'll have uh, this this uh, fairly robust uh, sequence of play that you've got to go through here, which makes it really easy to play. You can pretty much run the, the entire game off of this sequence of play because it does have lots of nice rules references here. Um, and it's going to be interesting to have the the, the U.S. as the Kind of the guy, the guy taking it on the chin to get to get started with, and we'll see how how that actually works out, and whether or not uh, they can actually regain the initiative and be the initiative player versus the reacting player. So, what I was intending to do with uh, combat forces was take the uh, the Belaruso uh, Belarusian Belarus forces and bring them in uh, in the south uh, if that would be the south down here I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna focus this in on the map a little bit uh, and try and uh, come in come in along this axis here 
uh, bring the Russians in through uh, Suduva, which I believe that means they're going to have to move from Belarus to here, do the attack, do some attacks if they if they need to, which is probably more than likely, and then uh, try and press through onto uh, into Lithuania. They should be able to tra trace supply through Belarus anyway, I think. I'm going to have to double check those rules, the supply rules, since they're, they're adjacent there. They should be able to run off the board there okay. Um, but this, this terrain might cause a problem. So we may need to clear this and have control of this area uh, before we can trace supply. And my intention was to bring basically the, uh, uh, the 58th, and the 70, oh, that's the 76th guy, that's not the 58th, and the Western Military District, or was it, uh, yeah, the Western Military District, uh, this, this formation here, the 6th Guard, whatever this division is here, these guys, this core, or this army group here, it's not very well focused, is it, fellas? Uh, and bring them on through that, uh, this location over here as well, and then, uh, leave something in this area that's right uh 20 guard these two for these two forces one in russia and one here one in belarus to try and um uh, mess around with the latvians and lithuanians uh with a, an idea of just taking all of this out as quickly as we can um <clears throat> now how that'll work out don't know i think we've we'll, got to be fairly aggressive but careful with the airborne because while they are a, dynam a dynamic force, they are not very robust, just based on my experiences with India, Pakistan, and with the Chinese. Uh, these, these guys, you know, they're uh, one-steppers, uh, they're high, high efficiency ratings, uh, they have good defensive numbers, but uh, they're not very powerful on the attack. So lunging them or dropping them too far in uh, could be problematic. I would like to try and find a, a decent location somewhere in around this nexus of, uh, of cities. And look, it looks like I've left this open, which is probably a mistake. So I probably need to put something here for NATO or the Poles. Uh, but something in this area here, like these two, these two towns here block uh, a lot of the internal uh, movement uh, capability of, of the, uh, the Poles and any NATO forces that would be coming on. <clears throat> Gosh, I'm really croaky. I may have to sign off in a sec. So, uh, you know, think about where the airborne might land or uh, whatever the case may be, and then uh, and working out how, we, uh, how, how we'll drive out of Kaliningrad uh, into uh, the northern part of, uh, of Russia will be, will be interesting. So that's kind of my... Uh, my, my two cents uh, on that. Now, that's interesting. My little uh, down, uh, my little uh, negative one has gone away. I uh, appreciate whoever uh, decided they didn't like me and or didn't like the video and now have decided that it's bearable. I appreciate that. You're not a dick anymore. Now you're just an annoying prat. Okay, so... Yeah, you know, I've got. Bur I'm drinking. Uh, I'm drinking one of All Goods uh, cocktails. He was uh, saying it's. Uh, what was it? Um, is it Drambuie? Not Drambuie. Um, it's got a little orange tang to it. It's uh, anyway. It's bourbon and uh, some sort of like Benedictine. That's bourbon and Benedictine. It's kind of like a, a Manhattan. And it's uh, it's good, <laughs> really good. All right, uh, man, you are. Uh, Benedictine, thank you, sir. Dude, you guys are good. Kyle, you're on the money on that one. Stop stop posting. I can't read the comments. Baltic Air Police Mission plus nine NATO is plus one US and two plus three mission at the start. I'm doing tactical surprise. And six randomly drawn. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I got A through D. I think I've got A through D set up. I've got uh, those units uh, somewhere organized on the board or uh, ready to roll. That's right, here they are here. So I've got these guys uh, here. Uh, we've got the second ACR and I think this is the 101st or the 82nd, one of the two. OK, 
can't see. Oh, that's Marines, duh. Okay, so, uh, so I think we have all of the forces we should have uh, at, at first. So I don't, I'll tell you a quick funny story and then I'm probably gonna wrap this up uh, because um, uh, I'm losing my voice here. Oh good, I got the one, I got the, I got the, I got the one thumbs down thing. It's kind of like a mark of pride when I get that. Good, I'm glad someone put that back, thank you. Um, this so I found this U.S. Uh, reinforcement schedule and I was like, oh, cool! This is really awesome. And I was looking through all the charts and pulling pulling everything out, having a look at everything. And uh, I, I never turned this particular chart over. And so when I was setting up, all I had was what the tactical surprise scenario said, and it kept saying, you know, per the NATO and U.S. setup or whatever the case may be. And I never saw any of this. And when I set the game up, I was like, there's no freaking way that the U.S. Uh, doesn't start with more forces. And it wasn't until, um, I, I forget how I found out about this. Maybe I just flipped it over by mistake or something. But I saw all this and then finally uh, I tweaked to uh, the fact that this is what I need to be using to get set up. So this is a very handy chart that helps get you organized and get set up very, very quickly. It, um, if I had seen this initially, we could have had this set up a week ago. But I did, so there you have it. All right, okay, <clears throat> yeah, 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 USMC, yeah, I, I know, I, I'm, I'm a little slow today. Uh, okay, so, really what I wanted to do was just have a look at some of the options with you. I think it's, I, I'm feeling the more, as I, as I talk this through, the more I, I think about it, uh, it's, a, it's a heavy emphasis on uh, degrading the uh, NATO Air Force capability and the U.S. Air Force capability, and then a uh, uh, secondarily uh, probably the tracks. I'm a big fan of knocking out these tracks. Uh, the sooner you knock the tracks out, the sooner your uh, AWACS advantage goes up, and that gives you uh, expanded range uh, for uh, electronic detection, uh, for the, and a benefit for your detection roles and really makes it hard for the enemy to uh, slip one by with the aircraft. Uh, however, we do, uh, we do have this factor here, these S-400 batteries that are pretty lethal. And uh, I have not uh, fully grokked the, uh, the, the, the Russia, this particular, this particular thing right here. Uh, these tracks here, I believe are permanent and we cannot degrade them uh, as far as I'm aware. So we won't, be we won't be doing anything in Mother Russia per se, but we uh, certainly can try and knock these out if we can locate them, et cetera, et cetera. So thought I'd just check in with you guys and have a quick uh, have a quick chat about this. We'll be playing this all weekend. I may do some uh, some stuff live once I get through. I think all the initial cruise missile business, and we get into the regular gameplay, so that I don't mess up any of the uh, uh, early scenario stuff. So that uh, because I think that's going to be critical how that all goes, and it's hard to extemporaneously sort of share commentary with you and keep all the rules and stuff straight. There's a lot of moving parts with this game. But once we get into the regular turn sequence, I'll, I'll run some live stuff. If you're interested, we'll do that. And uh, we will uh, have some fun. Uh, what I've found typically, like most games, is uh, this is a fairly forgiving system. If you make a mistake uh, by, you know, uh, plus or minus one DRM somewhere, it all works out in the wash. So uh, we won't be uh, too upset about it. But we do uh, obviously want to avoid uh, you know, major rules errors, which I have been known to make in the past. All right, gentlemen. Hey, yeah, you know, Mitch, I, I, I'm not going to bother you with uh, rules questions and stuff. I, I'll I'll work it out. I'm a big boy, and um, if we fuck it up, we'll. Uh, oops, edit beep. Uh, if we mess it up, we will. Uh, We'll get after it and uh, and restart it. It's not a problem. All right, guys. Appreciate all the uh, all the folks uh, checking in, and we'll look forward to catching up with you real soon. Take care.